Hi, I'm Larry Dignan, and we're here with Mary Jo Foley to talk everything Windows 11. Hi, Mary Jo. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Larry. Thanks for having me. So there was a lot to cover yesterday. So I guess let's just go through the big bullets. Um, what was the most important thing you saw yesterday? Well, I would say, okay, let me do the most surprising. How about that? Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> okay. I thought I was very surprised they were ready to show Android apps in the store. I had heard they were trying to make this work, but I thought maybe it would be like a 2022 thing. So the fact that they already have a partnership with Amazon and they're ready to have the Amazon app store inside of the new Microsoft store, I was very surprised about that. Yeah, that surprised me on a few fronts. Um, one, I mean, it was a nice little easy port for them because they have Amazon doing the work with their store already. Right. So it's a nice way to vet the Android apps right out of the gate. Totally. I thought what was what concerns me though is that it's just going to be like this Franken store. Um, I yeah. don't know what that integration is going to look like between Android and Amazon and mm -hmm. Microsoft Store, and Microsoft hasn't done great with stores to begin with. No. Um, <laughs> so I'm just kind of wondering how that's all going to work out. I know they. They only gave us kind of bare details yesterday, but they did say they've been working on something they called the Windows subsystem for Android, which is a lot like the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, and what it's going to let you do, it sounds like, is to run Android open source project, AOSP, Android apps in the store. But I'm not clear if, if there will be a, a way to run any Android app that's based on some AOSP uh, distribution in the Microsoft Store, or if it only will come through curated mini stores like the Android one, uh, like the, sorry, like the Amazon one. I'm thinking it's that, the latter option. Um, but then they also announced this um, deal with Intel for this Intel Bridge compiler technology, which sounds sort of like emulation for Android on top of Intel hardware. So yeah, they, they kind of teased out a few pieces, but they didn't really give us a cohesive story yet on how this is all gonna look and work. Yeah, all I know is when I read compilers and things that sound like emulators and windows mm. and stores within a store, I know. I just see a spinny ball. Um, yeah. That you know, may or may not happen, but <laughs> it's a risk. Right. So. It was pretty clear to me that the subtext of this announcement was, look how terrible Apple is at being a good citizen with their store and look how great we are going to be. We're gonna be the store for everyone, right? <laughs> so I think I think that was the mess the kind of not so subtle messaging there. I mean, Microsoft also announced if you bring your own commerce platform to their store, you, they'll give you 100% of the revenues generated through their store. Um, in contrast to what Apple's been doing. And even if you have like, app, you know, in-app purchases in the Microsoft store, you'll be able to keep those too. So they're trying to look like, look how great we are. We're the, we're the ultimate open player here. And, um, you know, whether that creates more of a mess or if it actually works in their favor, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I was I was very interested when Satya was talking because I was literally just kind of jotting down keywords Yeah, where it was like open platform, creating the next software <laughs> giant. Um, yeah. And it was yeah. very, very anti-Apple, very pro-developer. Definitely. <laughs> and it does kind of show where who's fighting for developers. Although I would also toss Android in there too. Um, yeah. So it, it's it's interesting. I don't know, like the way the regulatory stuff's going right now, and it's all anti big tech. Yeah, I yeah. don't know how much of this is actually developer and user benefit versus positioning <laughs> with whatever Congress winds up doing. I agree a hundred percent. You know, the other audience that Microsoft was kind of catering to with Windows Eleven is their PC maker partners, right? So. Um, they didn't really want to put it this bluntly, but basically it's, hey, we want everybody who's on old hardware to upgrade to new hardware running Windows 11. And that's why they came out with a whole new spec list 
where, you know, a, a lot of existing newer PCs will meet these, but old machines will not. Things like dual core 64 bit processor and TPM2 as a recommended um, security baseline, um, four gigs of RAM, 64 gig hard drive. You know, this isn't weird stuff from newer PCs, but a lot of people out there who are running Windows are have it on pretty old machines, like five or five years or older. And those people are gonna have to upgrade their machines or stay on Windows 10 until 2025 when support ends. Yeah, and I think I think that's gonna be a key thing. Although the pandemic juiced PC sales so much, it I may know. not be that big of a deal. True. Although I, I do have a desktop that I'm upgrading and yeah. the one I have, I'm just trying to get a few more weeks out of it, is basically <laughs> crawling. Yeah. So it's already you're already if you're damn close to it anyway. Um, or I think most people are. Yeah. So so I think that may not be as big of a deal. Um but yeah, I mean, for hardware vendors, they're going to need something to drive a PC cycle after the pandemic, exactly. hybrid work, all that stuff. Because I mean, next year is going to be nothing but upgrades anyway. Exactly. And then I can't, I can't leave this conversation without bringing this up, which is the new um, servicing model that they're introducing for Windows 11. Because on my Twitter stream, this got the most shout out, right? So. Instead of two feature updates per year, we're going to one, which so many IT pros wanted, and enterprise and education users, 36 months of support, which means you only need to update your Windows users every three years, technically. Um, and even Home and Pro is gonna get 24 months of support with Windows 11. This is this is like everything IT pros wanted and more, right? Like. It was, it was for them like, wow, the big selling point here. I, you know, the new UI is cool and like, you know, centered start menu and the new wallpapers, but this is what the IT pros were like, yes, here we go. <laughs> yeah, and the thing that's interesting about that, um, especially if you look at education, right? Like yeah. they had to do something because exactly. Chrome is just kicking their ass up and I down know. in education. Like, yeah. I mean, there are kids that don't even know what Windows is. I know. Until they get to college and need Excel or something. But right. generally speaking, like it's an it's a route in education. Yeah. So if you can make and and the Chrome argument is really all about IT management. It is. It's just easier to manage, right? It is. It, right. It's updated. It's it's secure. It's you can yep. you have the admin tools. So so I kind of wonder. Yes, this was good for the IT pros, but I, I wonder if a lot of this was aimed clearly at education. Mm -hmm. I think also the, the Android apps in the store was aimed at the Chrome compete space as well, right? <laughs> so yeah. those two things combined, they, I mean, since they decided to get rid of Windows 10 X, which was going to be their Chrome compete strategy and product, they had to do something with 11 and this is what they're doing pretty much. What do you think it means for Microsoft's mobile strategy? I mean, you have the Duo, which you know seems yeah. like it's getting discounted a couple hundred bucks every day. Yeah. Um, you know, like it's you know it's it's one of those. It's also an Android Windows kind of Franken platform, so to speak. <laughs> um, yeah. Does Windows 11 help with that at all? Uh, a little. You know, I think they're going to continue to do new versions of the Surface Duo, which runs Android. And if they do, I guess it makes sense to have some Android apps in the store if you want to have the store be consistent across all your platforms, even if it's Android. Um, the, rum the rumor is next, you know, around this fall, there may be a Surface Duo 2. But the, the platform I'm even more interested in than that is Surface Neo, which is the dual screen Windows um, tablet PC hybrid thing. I wonder if that is coming soon also, because I think that would be a really perfect machine to show off Windows 11 if you're Microsoft and you're looking to show it off in your own portfolio. Right. Yeah, it could totally work. Yeah. Um, one, one thing that Microsoft talked a lot about was, you know, they were hitting all the buzzwords with productivity, future yeah. work, creativity. Um, <laughs> what was their positioning there in terms of, you know, hybrid work, future of work and all that good stuff? So they had a kind of uh, multiple fronts of that going on. The part I thought that was one of the unsung features in a way of Windows 11 that's gonna help a lot with hybrid is this idea of 
uh, the new snap mode that's in Windows 11. Um, it sounds weird, right? Like snap, snap already exists in Windows, but it's kind of hard to use. And it, and if you have multiple monitors, the snap settings don't always stay put when you snap things and then have a restart. So the idea with Windows 11 is you have a very easy number of palettes you can choose from what you want your snapped apps to look like, you know, what kind of configuration. Um, and then you can have these things called snap groups, which, you know, think about it. If you use your same PC at home and at work, you could have a bunch of apps snapped in a way that you would use them at home and then have a whole totally different set of apps snapped in a different way for work. And you could just rotate on the same PC between these two kinds of snap groups. I think that is super cool and it's definitely a hybrid play. But then they also had the Teams play, right? So they are replacing the Skype Meet Now button that's in Windows 10 with a Teams chat button. Um, that's not that surprising, right? Like we know at some point Teams consumer probably will replace Skype. Um, but they did what they didn't do, which a lot of us were thinking was they didn't preload Teams, uh, like even the free version or any version on Windows 11. They didn't go that far. Yeah, and, and I think that has to do with everything with the regulatory environment and big yeah. tech. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, because we're all used to Zoom. We're all used to, yeah. you know, Slack. And, and if you do the full Teams integration, it just yeah. raises some hackles. Yeah. Among other folks. <laughs> even the even the Teams chat button integration got Stuart Butterfield, who runs Slack, going yesterday. He was out saying, look, here's a more evidence of Microsoft behaving in a way that violates antitrust. So I'm like, yeah, OK. Uh. Yeah. And, and I think that's I think that's what the whole Windows 11 launch is kind of has that as a subtext. It does. For like sure. it's, it's all you can just see you can just see Amazon and Google and Microsoft and Apple they're kind of standing in a yeah. circle going like this <laughs> yep. And, and, yep. And, yeah I was parsing all that out yesterday I was yeah just like, that's what I know who this is directed at like, yeah exactly almost, yeah they didn't name names but you knew who they were talking about exactly so what do you think the uptake is going to be for Windows 11 um I think Microsoft's doing a lot of things right Unlike Windows 8, they're not just shoving Windows 11 down your throat, right? Like they're saying, if you want to get it this holiday season and you're one of these people who are willing to be a seeker, check Windows Update, you can download it if, as long as your machine meets the criteria. Um, and then if you're somebody who's like, yeah, I don't know, you can wait until Windows 10 is no longer supported or near no longer supported. And Microsoft will obviously push it to you through Windows Update at that point. Um, I think they totally, like I said, learn their lesson with Windows 8. Don't just tell people, okay, we're turning off Windows 10 this year and turning on Windows 11. Instead, they're going to support the two in parallel, 10 and 11, um, with new updates and continued security fixes and patches for the next couple of years. And I think that's the right way to go. That means if you're interested in Windows 11, there's features in there you like. Um, the UI or any of the kind of under the cover features around security, for example, then you might want to rush faster to get Windows 11. But if you're somebody who is like, yeah, you know what, Windows 10 is perfect for me and I don't need to rush, then you can wait. What do you think um, in terms of, there's the update, but there's also, how important is Windows to Microsoft? Like it doesn't contribute much financially anymore. Yeah, it's well, still <laughs> one of their flagship brands, right? But I mean, yeah. we're not all, you know, it, they didn't they rename the OS Azure, for instance. Right. Um, what does Windows mean to Microsoft at this point? Um, it's still fairly a fairly big contributor to the bottom line. It is. Um, like, I think 30% of revenue is still coming from Windows at this point. You know, going the, the growth rate is going down compared to Azure going up, obviously. Um, and, you know, the future of the company is the cloud. But... They are, they kind of just been letting Windows coast for a while. And then the pandemic made them realize, wait, people still are ready to buy PCs and need them and want them. And with the hybrid work future continuing, I think the PC may have a lot longer life left in it than Microsoft had planned for. So their, their new message is Windows is back, baby. We're ready to keep it going. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think the, I was talking to Lenovo about their latest ThinkPads and stuff coming out. Yeah. And one thing they said was they rolled out one of the ThinkPads had, you know, it's a 16 inch screen. 
Mm -hmm. and it had a ton of horsepower. And I was like, so you're not necessarily worried about the global road warrior anymore. Yeah. And they said they were, but they, they also said your laptop is now the office. Yeah. Right. Cause you're going to right. hotel someplace. Yeah. You're going to, you know, be in a conference room or wherever, and then you're going home. So your office, you're basically, it's going to be a three, yeah. four pound thing. You're lugging back and forth. Yep. And, you know, speaking to that, that's how you get to those snap menus and the snap apps and, and all that kind of stuff. Cause that's what they're kind of gunning for. And it's Definitely. pretty smart overall. It is. It is. Yeah. I, I kind of am excited that they aren't just going to let windows kind of quietly go off into the sunset. Cause I feel like, I feel like for many of us, it still is very central to how we work and it's more fun to have something that's exciting and looks good and works faster. I mean, they're, they're talking about performance improvements coming with this too. Let's see. I mean, if they can make battery life actually better, if this wake on touch thing that some people have seen actually makes it so when you open the lid of your laptop and it turns on like it was supposed to all these years, that'd be amazing, right? <laughs> make it really right. great. <laughs> and, and it'll also close their biggest gap, which is, you know, with Chrome OS, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the Apples with the M1 kind of work the same way. So yeah. they have to close that gap regardless. They do. They do. The one thing I thought they might have talked about a little more yesterday, and maybe they're saving this for later, was Windows on ARM. Like what Windows 11 on ARM was going to bring and how it was going to improve. But we didn't really hear much about Windows on ARM yesterday. Yeah, and that's kind of weird because there's a lot of those, a lot of the Qualcomm based systems are coming out now and they're actually yeah. getting some decent traction. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. Windows 11 is going to be sort of that bridge where it doesn't matter as much. I don't know. Yeah, I th they've got a long road ahead with Windows on ARM. I mean, they're working on, you know, making making it so 64-bit apps um, work. I mean, sorry, x86 apps work in emulation and all that and x64 apps. So, yeah, I, I, they've got a long road ahead. But um, I still thought we might get a little glimpse in there yesterday or some sort of nod about, you know, ARM is going to be a big partner and all but i guess because because intel is still so much of a bigger partner for them they decided to just kind of back intel's play with yesterday's lunch yeah and, and they probably also didn't want to answer more questions like yeah true <laughs> i mean i could you could you see us if we were like talking compilers for android and subsystems and then and then yeah. suddenly here comes the arm emulation yeah yeah we'd be like what the hell is this it's, I know, it's just true. too complicated yeah. I know there's only so many messages you should deliver in a launch event, right? Right. And they, they hit like they hit like four or five. I was probably yeah. smart to stop there. So exactly. Any other things you want to throw in about Windows that we didn't mention? Um, no. I just I'm I actually might join the insider program just so I can try this out. I'm I'm not one to typically do insider builds, but I'm kind of curious about Windows eleven. So I might give it a whirl. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.